Greetings. What we have on the bench today are four versions of a um, design for a wooden item, uh, shamelessly stolen from another YouTuber. And basically these are just uh, a wooden thing to uh, put a pair of headphones on. Four different versions, go through them one by one, see the designs. Right, on the first version I made, um, this is a, almost a direct copy of the uh, one that I've seen. So we have angle on the bottom, angle on the top, cut out to hold the uh, top of the headphones, stop them moving around, the headband. Um, not quite sure what the wood is. But um, seems to me the design with this one, although the headphones will sit like that, probably uh, not the best. Put that one aside. Version number two went a little bit taller and on this version deleted the double angle at the bottom and just put a single angle which is attached by screws and glue through the bottom. So that one sits a little bit, seems to hold the headphones quite well, they uh, sit up okay. Putting that one aside. Version three went back to the double compound angle and uh, used a bit of raw edge, um, black wattle that is, just for something a little bit different. But again, they don't hang so much as uh, prop like that. Not a huge problem, I think. Um, possibly okay. Fourth version. This one, probably my favourite, just because of the wood. It's Australian red gum. And with the extra height, the headphones just sort of sit there like that. So, might have a crack at making one, eh? So, we've selected our bit of timber, and we need three pieces. And for this one, I'm gonna make the top at 90, and I'm gonna make the riser portion of it 230, Base is going to come in at 250. Probably get away with less than that, but that's the uh, sizes I'm going to use for this particular one. In addition to that, we need a center line. down the whole piece and then from that centre line we can then work out how much of a taper we want I'm going to make that 60 so that's 30 millimetres either side of the centre line at the other end I might just bring that in about 20 millimetres each side. Which gives me a base size of approximately 100 millimetres on this piece of wood. So that's the top, that's the riser piece, and that's the base. And with a big enough ruler, We can draw 
in the line that's going to give us our taper. And that's pretty much the marking out. You can make a very fancy uh, tapering jig if you want. All I do is take a piece of wood that's of a known dimension, which is parallel, line the edges up with your taper, and when you run that through the saw, just the tapered piece of wood gets cut off, secured by a couple of clips. Nice and simple. Rinse and repeat for the other side. Right, on the first cut line we need two cuts at 30 degrees. That's for the top portion to the neck. And on the second cut line we do one at 30 degrees, which gives us our angle from the base to the riser and uh, leaves a um, Sloping front on the actual base. Could do this on all the sides. I might do that yet. See how we feel. We do this. Well, I do it on the bandsaw. You could, of course, put the tapering pieces you've cut off back on there and do it on a uh, sliding chop saw or even a uh, triton, possibly even the uh, crosscut sled. Lots of ways of skinning a cat. So we'll do that on the bandsaw next. So with the three pieces cut, gives you a general idea of what we're going to be uh, looking at. Uh, we'll go do a bit of uh, boring sanding work. Best to finish this off before, especially the underside area here. It's quite difficult to sand after the event. So we'll get all the pieces smoothed down and then we'll assemble it. Not a bad idea when you're sanding them down. Also... The edge that comes off the bandsaw, probably not the finest edge for gluing up. So I uh, finesse those a little on a sheet of sandpaper. I find it easier not to mess up the uh, angles doing it that way than using any sort of machinery type sanding. Plus, I haven't got a decent sander anyway. Not sure how well it'll show up. This, which is the top angle, um, doesn't actually come together perfectly straight off of the saw because of the material removed. And uh, I find the easiest way is just to finesse the, the neck part with a uh, hand plane. 
just to get a nicer uh, joint. So the next little job we have to do is square a line. Actually, we don't square it off the taper. Take a line off the back. This is just to give us a couple of uh, marks so we know where to put the screws through for mounting. They're fairly arbitrary as long as they're inside. I mean you could really mess around and make sure that it's as long as that's inside the timber and towards the other end so that your screws don't poke through there. Don't want any of that. Then you've got to do is make sure that that piece is central to that piece. A little bit of a mark there. Get my hand out of the way. Just so you can line everything up once we've drilled it and put a countersink in the bottom. When you've drilled and counterscrewed the uh, countersunk, the piece, the base, that's the bit that's in the vise, I find that lining it all up on the vise so that the neck part rests on the bench, like so, gives me a much better ability to transfer the pilot hole to the neck piece. Like so. Ready for assembly. So, put it all together. Symbol is a bead of glue. Don't be shy. Pop the screws in. Line them up. And When you've got them lined up, again this positioning makes it easier with the angle to keep everything together while you uh, finish it off like that. And that's the first bit. Wipe off your glue. On to the next bit. Now, to glue the top pieces together, we're not using any fastening, we're just relying on the glue joint. And the best method that I've uh, borrowed from other people, or the one that seems to work for me, is the blue tape method. Don't buy the cheap stuff, it's rubbish, you're not going to use much of it, and it's as simple as putting a piece of tape, putting your two pieces together, using the tape to hold it in place. Can be a bit fiddly, but seems to work quite well. One little tip is to make sure you've got your tape ready to go. And uh, did I say don't use the cheap stuff? Because all the stickies come off the back of that. 
useless. And there you have it. Once the glue's dried, we'll give it a final sand. Apply our finish of choice. I've seen, I'm sure you've all seen Danish oil being put on or sprayed varnish, whatever you fancy. That's pretty much gonna be it. I need to get this one edited and finished. So there you have it. Stands for your headphones. All done.